right, Saturday, September 21st. It is actually youth season opener here in Iowa. We're all super excited for hunting season to be kicking off here. Um, today I'm down here at the office, as you can tell, putting together my desk and still a work in progress. Got to get a chair and whatnot. But myself, Rye, and Dave will be working out of here um, going forward, and it's going to be really exciting doing that. We've all worked remotely up to this point, and so just getting to work together um, with not only good coworkers but good good buddies at the end of the day uh, will be a lot of fun. So, little update for me: uh, this past week, I was actually just taking some vacation time. I went up to Winona, Minnesota, with my girlfriend, spent some time up there, hiking around, doing some fun stuff and then uh, went to Columbus to visit my family and uh, friends and whatnot. Spent some time on a buddy's farm, doing a little bit of prep and just uh, overall enjoying this time of year and getting to see, getting to see those guys before the fall kicks off. Um, I did have one really good buck show back up on the public. Had him show up and he looks great. He's one I know from last year and uh, really excited to hopefully get some eyes on him at some point during the season. But. Um, that's really gonna be it for me as far as an update. Uh, like I said, was just traveling and everything last week. Uh, but on this week's episode, just gonna follow along with Rye. He was busy all week uh, getting some last minute projects done. He actually today uh, made it out to one of his new permission farms and checked out some new areas, got some cameras hung, moved his cameras onto some uh, fall locations, scrapes and whatnot. So excited to see what that farm does for him. It's, it's really exciting stuff. Um, to follow along with, and uh, hope you guys enjoy the episode. So, you see we're doing these hot fences around the tree planting. This is a piece of property, Mike also set me up with this owner much like the other one. Uh, and just again, doing a little work in exchange for hunting permission. We've got three fences around these tree plantings. This one we did the other day and he only had four foot T-posts at the time, so the deer have been jumping in and out of it. So I actually have a funny little video on a security camera from it, but we've got two others we're doing. We just switched out all the T-posts for six footers, pushed them with the skid loader, said bang them in. Would recommend that every day of the week. Thankfully he has a skid loader up here. So that's what we're doing this morning. It is September the 14th, I believe. Yes, it was probably the 13th. So got my coffee and uh, and get some work done I reckon that's pretty cool and then you store the white things makes sense I went and uh, switched the channel on the home camera so we can start getting the picture sent to us. And I pulled one card while I was over there. We have two pictures of this. And I mean, this is the other picture. So he's just walking in front of the camera, but. It's hard to tell the way his neck snake out like maturity, but. It does look young, but <laughs> that would also be my biggest deer. So short twos, splits on each three. Looks like a long four. And a, I mean, just a six by six, I'm guessing. He's got mass. He might be a six by five. He's got good mass. He does. I don't know. <laughs> he even has like a split right there. Yeah, he's got splits yeah. on both of them. Save about 12 o'clock. 
I'm gonna get me some sleep. I right, get up around five. Maybe Dave will make me coffee since he made me steak dinner tonight. <laughs> oh man. That's the plan. Good night. You can see they're taking corn out everywhere. I saw that yesterday coming home from the office. The person. But Dave and I. Good morning, Dave. Good morning. <laughs> we just left my house. It's about 6:30. Slipping over to this 90 acre permission farm that we uh, have talked about the, so far this year. We got rain coming tomorrow, and I only have a couple hours this morning, but we need to get cameras on the other side of the river. And I have not obtained a northerly access yet, so we are jetting over there this morning. I don't know what I'm talking about. It's still early. I didn't have coffee, didn't have breakfast. <laughs> Get her done. No energy. <laughs> yeah. That's all right. Abby will make breakfast when we get home. She'll probably be at the grocery store and we'll have to do it ourselves. I got a but Casey's slice in. I'm good. got a Casey's slice. That's why you were late this morning. <laughs> Stopped at Casey's and didn't even offer me breakfast. I need a gas, breakfast. too. I need, <laughs> I need a gas. Oh, the gas, huh? <laughs> milligrams August September 21st you look cold what this morning today? or what I'm always cold in the morning man I don't know what it is but just like my body just don't wake up right away I don't think I am gonna wear my sweater though because that'll be getting ditched yeah. as soon as we get out there now the question is did I bring my treehouse 38 because I wasn't thinking this morning I don't think I did so Cameras can we get in a treehouse nine? Oh yeah. So the reason that we are kind of making this push today, as you guys heard earlier, I jumped out here to get the cell camera fixed one day this week and had a picture of a freaking nice deer <laughs> and uh i only have a couple cameras out on this farm um, and really we're just gonna get these cameras moved to scrapes and these cameras put on the north side of the farm across the river and just try and figure out if this deer is in the area we got one picture of him and then all the cell camera sent all the pictures from the area was the only picture of him so it's not like kind of in a different situation than Josh, right? So Josh with that deer, he's thinking like, that deer lives there. How does he go in, do work, have a plan, move into the early season without bumping the deer off the property? For me, it's the opposite. It's like full dive in one day, two days, however long it takes, get everything done and don't worry so much about it. So that's kind of the strategy we're doing today, more or less. Our cameras were just in spots for deer movement in the summer. Now we're gonna move them and maximize the areas we're covering across the farm. There you go. That's what we're doing today. It's not very often I have to like loosen straps like that. We've got some strap give, I love it. Let's think of the big guys. I think I wanna have a camera in that corner, but that'll be the last one we will put up. This is a little, more difficult to figure out. Could run one here or one up here. That creek comes up and it's gonna push all the movement kind of up this way. I think there's probably gonna be some sort of creek crossing around here. It was pretty deep last time. I don't know what it looks like now, but either one or two cameras over here. Again, I think these spots close to the truck will just do on the way back. And now like something in this area, the property line runs across here but just the way it kind of folds. I imagine there's some kind of creek crossing here, much like we found over here. And ideally, I'd like to get a camera back in there. 
so that would be one, two, three. So take three backpacks. I don't think we need more than three cameras on that side, especially if you get good scrape started or find some old scrapes. Let's hammer down. Quick trip. Love some wet corn in the morning. This is one thing I'll say. With field edges that are super grown up, it is much easier just to cut through the rows of the corn. I mean, I'm 6'3", 280, and I can do it. Saves a little bit of time. Keeps you from being covered in pollen and stuff. Not sneezing, not a mess. Not getting frustrated tripping over stuff. It's something I do. I'm not gonna say corn is the best, but, you know, better than the field edge. How can you not love this stuff? <laughs> I mean, uh oh. Alright, we're good. So basically, up here is where that ditch ties in. And I think we'll just wrap that corner and follow that creek. It's probably pretty dry right now, well, judging from the river. This river stays low. I mean, like to come in and hunt this. That being low makes all the difference in the world. Danger zone. It's a bunch of like twisted maples, but. If you can have a setup, like in the evening, and then just with a west northwest wind, just dump back down to this creek. I don't really know what kind of move you're like. There's a good crossing right there. Crossing, save. I can make it. Ah. north wind is going to blow us back over the creek so theoretically your north wind cruising spot is going to be on the river edge it's probably where we're going to put the camera we might put another one up here too but let's just see what the trails look like over here camera on that tree Given all the coons that we just saw, we're gonna go with the metal cable. This is something that I tried in some of the scrapes on that uh, first office video we did. And I just put it in the dirt and then just a little bit on the branches, but it worked really well. The one difference I've noticed, and this is the Evercom from Conquest Sense, right? So designed to be like a calming scent for the deer. And the one thing I've noticed with the scrapes, specifically on our farm, is there's been a lot more does that come to it pretty frequently. So and does mean bucks. So not that the bucks haven't hit it. We've actually had, we actually had a pretty good deer show up this morning over there. I originally thought he was a four year old, but looking at the pictures this morning, <laughs> big old mature eight points. So <laughs> this is what I do. I'll just, Take a little bit of that and just get it down in the scrape. And it almost is like a time release that way. And like maybe if a buck isn't here for a couple days, if obviously with that one buck, and there hasn't been a ton of bucks on camera, but they are using the property to an extent. So who knows when their next trip will be, but we will be ready. So here's the idea. Put a camera out, make a mock scrape. Deer walks in, hits the scrape, picture taken. Sounds like playing to me. So I'm gonna move this camera icon real quick just to where we are and rename it. 
007 and turn it blue. The red is basically proposed cameras for me, blue is active cameras. Um, but basically what we did, we walked up this. I wanted to get here because you can see, so I'm thinking a fair amount of that deer movement is gonna get pinched up above it. Now, the one thing is there's two crossings right here that were pretty nice crossings, so they might just come across the middle. We'll see, we can adjust if necessary, but the other idea is like find a crossing down here somewhere. So when I think about this, like north wind, if we have does bed in here, that buck's gonna cruise along the river edge. South wind is gonna be the opposite, they'd be up here, so. Well, we just left, and if I'd have walked like three feet farther, that nice trail I was looking for that comes across east to west across the top of this is right here. And Dave, if you turn around, show them where the scrape is. That'll do. Just all these trees are so big, dude. You get in that, but that's kind of dead at the top, maybe not. <laughs> Here last year. I mean, that would be our north wind camera. I think it's a good trail. Let's go ahead and throw it here. All right, and then we'll just make the loop because there's a camera on the back side I'd like to fix. So if we do that now, we can just cross the creek on the other side of the property and fix that camera on the way back. Rain tomorrow. I'm clear all the sun away. Yeah. Right. Strobe power medium aspect full. Okay, good. Because with full, it's a four by three image. And with this being so close to the camera where the scrape is and it's kind of pulling downhill, I want to have the extra room on top. That creates more of an image on top. Wide is the other option that gives you a 16 by nine photo. Generally, I run my cameras on that because as a video editor, 16 by nine, it fits in the frame perfectly. So, but in this situation, it has the purpose and I think is what we're gonna run here. So we're gonna let her rip. Dave ruined my shot. And we could activate that scrape, fix this camera, and add that camera here on the crossings. Let's do that. It's gonna save us a little time. Watch the stuff that's buying. See that? No. There's a bike lock on that tree. You bring that e-bike back in here and nobody will feel it. I'm gonna put it right next to the tree stand. I'm gonna get in that oak. <laughs> Golly, I mean, you gotta get up there, up there. them to start scraping on that oak right there.
we are getting to one of my favorite spots on the farm on the main show when i first came out on this farm this spot where three ditches come together all these inside corners come together there's one over my shoulder here and another one on the other side it just it's a spot to me that looks like we should have a stand already to be honest with you but a little behind but i'm gonna get a camera in here and i am going to oh get a little dark on you let me adjust that better you can see over my shoulder everything just kind of dumps off behind me and funny story so we found that camera when we were out here the first time it's actually mike's camera from 2017 i think so if we can get that off the tree it's in a lock box we might take that with us but let's take a look what it looks like So you can see, it just, I'm inclining down. This is the first ditch that comes up. We'll jump in that ditch. Walk up here to the uh, center of it. You can kind of see one ditch comes from that way, right up there. And there's another ditch that shoots off this way. Then you have this boom, point of confluence. Field one corner, field two corner, and field three corner. So I'm just gonna do a slow 360 pan of a stop, how the spot looks, and really just like the confluence of everything is in this point. I think you can hunt other sides of it and be successful, but I think we can talk about maximizing your chances in the stand. This is probably one of the best locations that I've ever found. And Mike found it first. So, super exciting. Oh, spot focus is on. Gotta change that. Super exciting. I'm going to get a scrape in here somewhere. Honestly, right over my shoulder right here might be the best spot. But we're going to look around for a minute. And uh, hopefully this week I have a buck on camera here. I think I will. It's that good of a spot. Bingo. Bike clock from earlier was for Mike's camera. I need to bring some bolt cutters and get that, but that's kind of neat. I mean, this is you can turn around, Dave, and show them where the camera is in relation to Mike's old camera. Great minds think alike, huh? <laughs> um, but that bike lock we found earlier is probably one of Mike's old cameras too. So that wraps up what we're doing today on this farm we gotta get back to the house i'm already so late for today with what we got going on but we've got a couple other farms we're going to be doing the same thing on throughout the week gavin's back in town uh as you guys saw at the front of the video and he's got some stuff that he's going to be doing throughout the week he's putting some trail uh, trail cameras uh i think he's putting some tree stands up they both start with t see how i get confused but uh, on the public this week, it's within that window where you can legally put them out on the public. Now, if you guys didn't know, seven days before season is the maximum that you can put a tree stand on public land in Iowa. So useful tip if you hunt public out here. Um, as far as that, I'm excited. We've got the farm going. We've got the one picture of the big buck. Hopefully we start to get some more of them or maybe we find another deer with these extra cameras out and we can start making a game plan going into October 1st. I'm excited, the season's here. And uh, I'm gonna get back to the truck and go home and edit this video <laughs> we'll catch you guys next week we bumped that deer out of his bed in the peninsula that's at nine i was talking about when we were going back in there oh, this is that mature eight that we've been getting on camera gosh look at the body on that thing man gosh that eight man he's like 100
110 inches, but golly, did you see that body? <laughs> That's my problem, man, is like, I get so jacked up with mature gear, like I would, mm, don't, don't test me, don't test me.